Hi guys, Scott Woodward to talk about the third qualifying final to be played on Saturday. The Seagulls versus the Cowboys. It's second against seventh and is to be played in Sydney at the Sydney Football Stadium, uh, which is an advantage for the Seagulls only because the Cowboys have to catch a plane, but really it's, uh, it is, it's not a home ground for the Seagulls, albeit a little advantage. Seagulls are very short in this game, but uh, having said that, the last 10 times these two teams have played, it's 5-5. The only time they played at the Sydney Football Stadium, and it was a victory to Manly. Uh, let's have a look at the um, the ins and outs, and uh, Manly are significantly better off than the Cowboys here. Uh, they get their best player and outstanding try scoring with Brett Stewart back into the side. Uh, Kieran Foran, um, their 5-8 and playmaker, comes back into the side. Will Hoppawati will move to the wing. Um, Jamie Biro will also go to the bench, uh, and Tony Williams is on the bench. That gives the Seagulls a very, very good bench. As a matter of fact, both of these teams have got outstanding benches. Uh, the big in for the Cowboys is Dallas Johnson, and he was sadly missed last week. Uh, some very, very poor um, defensive displays by the Cowboys last week. Uh, they really need uh, Dallas back in there, not just because of his work rate and his technique and tackling, um, although he nearly knocked himself out last time he, uh, he had a go at it. But uh, he's just uh, a calming factor in the forward pack, his experience, and they just love playing with him into the side. I've got no doubt that they'll go a lot better with him there. The interesting thing for the coach with uh, the Cowboys is he, se he selected young James uh, Seguiaro um, onto the bench, and he'll come on and uh, create... Uh, all sorts of problems for the Seagulls uh, when he comes on at hooker. Uh, fantastic young player. But he's also selected uh, the teenager, Jason Tamolo. Now, um, I saw this guy play about 18 months ago uh, when he only just turned 16, and he's a fantastic prospect. He, he had first grade written all over him, and he's, he's such a big guy, but he's mobile, and he can step off both feet, and he has the ability to not only bust the line but then get the ball away. Uh, you don't see that sort of skill factor in a kid so young. Um, and as good as, as what he is, I feel that um, he's not ready for semi-final football. And um, although he's selected on the bench, I'm not sure if the coach will play him. Uh, he will struggle um, after he plays five or ten minutes at this level. And I think he could be seen um, having some defensive problems. And I've got no doubt that the Seagulls will target him if he plays um, I'd much rather be going with the experience of Ashton Sims or, or Carrie, Corey Patterson or, or Scott Bolton. I think that's what the coach will do. Interesting to see if he goes with uh, his young gun, though. Um, he certainly will cause some problems when he's got the ball, but um, got a lot of negatives in his game as well. Um, with, um, with the big out, Glenn Stewart for the Seagulls, he's their best forward. Interesting that Storm have lost their best forward and the Broncos have lost their best forward. So, too, has Manly... Uh, while he's irreplaceable, I do think they can compensate for him because Manly have got such good depth. And the guy that's been asked to do that uh, or place position, if you like, is Shane Rodney, and he did a wonderful job last week. Uh, probably the best game I've seen him play. He took the responsibility. He plugged up the holes, and look, he's not. He doesn't. Um, he doesn't talk as good, and he doesn't uh, hasn't got the vision of Glenn, but he did a very, very, very good job. Uh, and the guy that helped him a lot was Anthony Watmo. Um, Anthony's been selected in the second row, but he will play that lock forward position, and he'll cover centre and the left edge. Uh, and I think um, if we're going to go on the selections here, uh, Vic Morrow will probably play left second row, I would think, and he'll come on and be replaced by Tony Williams, who will create all sorts of problems. Uh, what an incredible impact he is, Tony Williams. They have a guy like um, Tony Williams come off the the bench and Jamie Bureau come off the bench uh, is quite a, a wonderful thing and obviously big George Rose is there as well. So it's a very, very well balanced side. Glenn Stewart definitely will be missed but they compensate for him really really well um, and obviously the two playmakers which they didn't have last week uh, Brett Stewart and Kieran Fawn both weren't there uh, and what an incredible effort having both those two guys not on the field and have Dale Cherry Evans um, step up. Um, he also didn't have Glenn Stewart there um, and Dale Cherry Evans step up on his lonesome and just control that game. Uh, for a guy having his first year in the NRL, it was just mind-boggling to see. You just don't see guys do that in their first year in the NRL. And... Um, for a guy who's just been awarded the Rookie of the Year, and he won it by 100 yards, as far as I'm concerned, it was a marvellous effort. Something that a lot of people may not realise, Dale Cherry Evans has made 95 
tackle breaks this year over the over the, over the course of the season. Uh, and a lot of people had trouble whether or not he would last the 26 rounds of his very first year in first grade. Not only has he lasted the rounds, but he's just continued to get better and better. Uh, and I have no doubt that Mal Meninga, Mal Meninga has got him marked down as a future halfback for Queensland and very well could go on um, and be the future replacement for Jonathan Thurston. Uh, big statement for a kid having his first year, but uh, he's just continued to amaze me. He was the one red flag I had on Manly for this year, whether or not he would last the season. And I've ticked off that box. I've been able to tick off the Brett, Brett Stewart box. Um, he's come through. In, well, he's re resuming from an injury. My mail is that he's OK, providing he's OK. Um, he's one guy they cannot replace. Um, they need Brett Stewart and they need Dale Cherry Evans, and uh, they'll be hard to beat in any game that they play. Brett Stewart, of course, has scored 109 tries from 134 games. I don't know anyone, any fullback or anyone in any position that has got a percentage like that. It's just quite amazing. As far as the Cowboys are concerned, uh, Matthew Bowen, um, he's right up there this year with um, the Storm fullback, Billy Slater, in terms of performance on the field this year is concerned. He was the number one uh, player in the NRL this year for metres gain, top kick return metres, 1,411 metres this year, Matthew Bowen. What an unbelievable. He just seems to be getting better with age. Fantastic effort, and he will be the big danger man, along with Jonathan Thurston for Manly, no doubt about that. Um, the big problem for the Cowboys, and they can't afford to do it if they're going to beat Manly, is they have consistently started slowly in almost every game they've played this year, and they've had to play catch-up football, and it puts an enormous amount of responsibility on Jonathan Thurston. Jonathan Thurston, so far since he come back from his injury, has been playing with a bandaged knee, and there's no question that it has affected his pace and some of the things that he does. Um, while he's still a very, very uh, dominant player, he's not the great player that we've seen uh, in the last month or so. So, um, very interested to see if he runs out with the bandage on his knee or not. Uh, they need him to step up, and they need him to have a man of the match performance if they hope to beat uh, Manly in this game. The other red flag they've got is that Matt Scott um, is still not 100%. He has a crook back, uh, and I'm sure if this wasn't such a crucial game that Matt Scott may not be playing in this game. So to have a question mark over your, your two best players, your two captains, Jonathan Thurston and Matt Scott, is not an ideal situation coming into this game. The Seagulls are number one for tries in the NRL, and they're number three for tries against in the NRL. Um, you can't get much better than that when you're coming into uh, semi-final football. They deserve to win this game. They deserve to get their week off um, and then play to get into the grand final and then they'll get Glenn Stewart back. Obviously, they don't get Glenn if they don't win that game. But for me, I can only see a manly victory. The only way I can see that not being the case is if Jonathan Thurston is back to his best and he can combine with Bowen. Uh, and those two guys can do anything and um, no surprise to see them win. They're absolutely capable of winning, but it's a very, very well drilled side, this Manly, uh, and why I can see that they will miss Glenn Stewart, I think they'll compensate, and I think they'll get the money, and I think they'll deserve the week off, and uh, they'll be very hard to beat in this competition. So for me, it's all Manly. Hope you have a good win. Talk to you later. Cheers.